All right, welcome to your last artist of the week. I know you guys are going to miss these a whole bunch. Um, this week we're going to focus on Chuck Close. Um, he's a contemporary artist, still alive, and uh, makes these amazing paintings that I fortunately got to see in a museum in San Francisco, and they're huge, just gigantic, and really amazing when you get to see them um, in person. Now, uh, Chuck Close was a portrait artist, and that means he focused on people's faces, and for a good reason. He actually was diagnosed with this rare kind of condition um, where he visually uh, has a really difficult time remembering people's faces, so he made portraits to kind of work through that. And Chuck Close was um, an artist to be admired in a lot of ways because as you'll learn, he had a lot of obstacles he kind of had to overcome in his life, and um, that was one of them. He couldn't recognize people's faces. Okay, um, this is a large self-portrait he created. He um, often made photorealist paintings, as you can see. This looks like a photograph because it's, it's so realistic it looks like a photo, but it's not, and this is just amazing and also huge, like I said, um, made really, really big paintings. Okay, now, um, it may be very overwhelming to try and draw somebody's face, let alone paint it, whether it be you're painting at small scale or a large scale, and so something that Chuck Close did so that he wasn't overwhelmed with these tasks and projects was that he broke it everything down into a grid, as you're seeing here. Okay, that way, rather than trying to draw or paint somebody's entire face all at once, you just go square by square, and it makes things a lot easier. Okay, um, now he was extremely well known for his style of using the grid, and you can see a grid on this painting here, all these boxes. But what he did to be much more colorful is um, each, each square is filled with its own unique little colors and patterns, and um, each square is almost like a little art piece on its own, but together, um, when they're blended together and you kind of pull away from the portrait, you could see how all of these little squares build somebody's face, which is really, really cool. Okay, and again, if you see it in real life, it's absolutely amazing. Okay, um, this picture should give you a sense of um, the grand scale of his paintings and see how large they are. They were like, you know, 8 to 10 feet tall, you know. Um, and as you can see here, this will give you a sense of how Chuck Close works. So he has his setup reference picture um, and his huge painting. And you can see that it gets everything gets broken down square by square. And then he adds different colors in the background and sitting on top um, square by square. Now, also take notice that Chuck Close is sitting in a wheelchair and he has kind of like a funky brace. So at, um, at a certain age, Chuck Close um, kind of suffered from something happened in his artery and he had a blood clot and it left him a paraplegic. So not only can he walk, but his hands don't even work that well. But um, he worked to overcome that and still continue his career as an artist, which I think is amazing. And I hope I hope you do too. That's amazing. Um, also, it should be known that at a very at a young age, um, he was dyslexic and was having a really hard time in school. And um, uh, they didn't even want him to take like any sort of like math or science classes because they just thought he couldn't get it. He couldn't even do like the multiplication tables and stuff. Um, but uh, they didn't want him to go to college. They didn't think he should apply. Um, but even through that difficulty, he could have been downtrodden and, you know, thought that um, he couldn't do anything. But instead, he made himself into an unbelievable artist, as you can see. Okay? the This will give you a sense of... Um, how if you're up close to a Chuck Close painting, it'll just kind of look like these abstract little patterns and random organic shapes and colors. And you're like, okay, cool, yeah, great pattern, whatever, what is this? But you pull away and all these boxes come together and create pieces of the human face. So this right here is simply this person's eye, which is pretty unbelievable. And um, here's another portrait done by Chuck Close, a ch uh, close up. And then when you pull away, it comes together. And it's really kind of cool because it looks like a pixelated um, computer screen. Okay, this video will give you a great sense of um, Chuck Close, more of his story, his struggles, um, and um, how he works now in his studio. It's really cool to see that because different artists work very, very differently. And um, he has a particularly in unusual case because he's a paraplegic so he gets some help and he has his wheelchair and he has his brace and everything and he also has some different kind of um contraptions to help him move his art around um so it's really cool to see that so check out the video now as usual you're going to get your pedigree information which i basically already told you about you know his life um some of his uh, obstacles uh, how he works um 
So go ahead and read through your bullet points and as usual, open up the Google Doc and write a short summary um, summing up this information. Okay, now for your higher level thinking question today, we're going to talk about making a connection. So Chuck Close is a very interesting story because he had a lot of obstacles. Again, he lost his father at a young age. He was dyslexic. He was not doing well in school. He finally found his niche. He became an artist, but then he was became paralyzed and had to figure out a way to work through that. So um, what I would like from you is to make a connection. To think about people in your life. Um, and if there's anybody who... I'm sure you know somebody who's had a lot of obstacles to overcome that, you know, a lot of people when they get to an obstacle or something difficult in their life, they kind of just like give up and, you know, and just, and, and don't try anymore um, and move on to something else. But some people actually push forward. Now for me, the connection, I was trying to think about my own life and I thought of my dear old dad. Um, he immigrated here, not speaking the um, language here in America um, at a young age, like 17. Um, he only had a sixth grade education from where he came from. Um, he was really small, um, but he still overcame all those obstacles. Um, so he worked, he worked really, really hard. He worked like every random job you can think like he worked as a janitor he worked in a shoe store he worked he worked i think in a cheese factory he worked making ladders at one point um and you know he eventually learned the language he used the little education that he did have and he wanted to learn more and actually my dad ended up uh starting his own company and the way that he did that was he saw um, somebody installing alarms at his job and he just wanted to learn about it. So he offered to work for these people for free <laughs> um, so that he could learn that business. And he eventually did. And then he opened up his own business. Um, so I'm really proud of him. And I think he overcame a lot of a lot of stuff. I think people look at him as just this guy who doesn't speak English very well, who's teeny tiny and couldn't, you know, move a rock. But um, he's actually a brilliant, smart, hardworking, strong person. So um, I'd love to know a story of someone from your life who has overcome obstacles like my dad or like Chuck Close, even better. Um, and uh, you'll type that up into your Google Doc. So um, this is the last one. It's been wonderful. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you like this artist.